The president argues it will cut the debt by nearly $3 trillion. Republicans say it will cut only half of that, predicting parts of the plan won't even make it to a vote. Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina is one of them. He joins us live on Capitol Hill. Your quote, Senator, is that uh, this tax uh, deficit reduction plan, you said, is dead on arrival. Democrats point to that kind of statement and say, look, the Republicans won't play ball with us. What you, how, what's your reaction? What I said is that the increase in taxes is dead on arrival. I'd like to work with my Democratic colleagues to save money in Medicare and Social Security to keep it from going bankrupt. I'd like to flatten the tax code and create some economic opportunity. But the, ta the president's proposal of increasing taxes on job creators is dead on arrival simply because they're Democrats who don't like it. The millionaire tax is going nowhere. You know, the numbers he's trying to change is not the deficit or uh, unemployment numbers, it's his polling numbers. He thinks that making Republicans argue against higher taxes on Warren Buffett somehow hurts us politically, helps him, and most Americans would like to see us work together to solve the problem of unemployment and debt. So your view is that his presentation is more about politics than policy? You got it. <laughs> Why would you send something up here that's already been voted on? It can't get anywhere near 60 votes in the Senate. The House is not going to take it up. And this is class warfare at a time we need to move the, the whole country forward. And we're not going to increase taxes uh, on, on, on anyone because we're trying to create jobs. And if you increase taxes on people who hire folks, you're, you're not going to move the, the ball forward on, on reducing unemployment. So clearly the president knows what this is about. This is about politics is politics taking over policy and that's too bad really. I have now heard essentially the same statement out of both the president and your fellow senator Chuck Schumer from New York who said essentially we can either raise taxes or we can cut Medicare benefits for old people we can't <laughs> afford to oh, do both. That's ridiculous. Well you know look at the people who've tackled our debt and unemployment fraud. Look at the Bowles Simpson Commission. Did they come out with a plan to attack millionaires and play class warfare? Look at the gang of six, three Republicans, three Democrats. Did their report play class warfare? No, they flattened the tax code. They dealt with the age uh, eligibility for Medicare and Social Security. Uh, they reduced spending. They didn't increase taxes. They lowered tax rates, but they did away with deductions and exemptions. The serious people who've looked at solving our problems in terms of high unemployment and a mountain of debt have not come out with a proposal like the president that creates conflict. They've tried to bring us together. In mentioning the uh, House Speaker by name, the, the president seemed to be, well, getting fairly personal. Is that yeah. a new thing in Washington politics, or, or is that the way these arguments always go? No, I think they had a chance to come up with a $4 trillion deficit reduction that the markets would show to be serious. The president's plan is heavy on taxes, very light on spending cuts. But President and Boehner, uh, Speaker Boehner came close. Speaker Boehner was willing to increase revenue by $800 billion by flattening the tax code and eliminating deductions and exemptions, bringing more revenue. He was never willing to play class warfare. So this is a change from the Bowl simpson model, from the Gang of Six, from previous negotiations. We now know this is a political decision by the president. He's abandoned trying to find bipartisan solutions. And I think it'll blow up in his face simply because those who've tried to solve this problem never created this conflict. This is a conflict created by the president but, to help his polling numbers. But you don't think that there is a danger to Republicans in voting against what, uh, what the president is paying, uh, is portraying as a tax on millionaires and billionaires? No, I don't. I, I think the American people are very savvy. They want more jobs, not less. And two years ago, the president said, you don't raise taxes during a recession. I think most Americans get it, that if you increase taxes on any group right now, particularly those who hire people, you're going to lessen the chance of growing the economy and hiring uh, folks who need a job. So I think most Americans get this for what it is, and a lot of Democrats see it for what it is. It's not going to get anywhere near the votes you need in the United States Senate. There are a lot of Democrats who are not going to play this game 
because they understand this just politics uh, rather than good sound policy. So I'm not afraid to tell the American people I would like to raise more revenue by flattening the tax code, eliminating deductions and exemptions for the few at the expense of the many. GE paid no taxes. Let's change the tax structure so people pay taxes at a rate that makes us economically competitive and quit trying to label each other as bad. I think simplifying the tax code would uh, win you a lot of support. Senator <laughs> Lindsey so. Graham of South Carolina, so. who sits on the uh, budget committees as well as... A and, and John, can I add one thing? Sure. It would win the president a lot of support, but he's chosen not to go down that road. All right. Uh, I, I think the White House is calling you for more political advice, Senator. <laughs> Senator Lindsey Graham. Thank Thanks. you. Well, listen up. Before you let your...